In this video, we are going to use our knowledge of transformations to graph some new functions. So we're given the graph of f of x, and we're asked to graph this new function, and this new function is labeled h of x. And we have kind of a function rule. You can think of this as my function rule. It's telling me what to do with this function f of x. And it has uh, two changes. We have f of x plus 2, so we have a plus 2 inside the parenthesis here with x, but then we also have a plus 2 outside of the parenthesis here. And each of these 2's is going to cause a different movement of our graph. So let's start with the 2 that's inside the parenthesis with the x. If you're thinking it's changing the x values, that's one way to think about it, and the x-axis, which is the horizontal axis, if we're changing x values, then that would cause a movement uh, horizontally, or a, a movement, a shift horizontally. And that's one good way to remember that when that number is in parentheses with the x, that it's going to be shifting the graph horizontally. It can get a little tricky, though, remembering which direction you're actually going to shift f of x plus 2 is going to cause a shift to the left 2. And then we have this plus 2 that's outside of the parentheses, and that's going to impact your y values, so that's going to be a vertical shift up 2. Now if you want to go ahead and do this one step at a time, then you would take each of the coordinates on your graph and move them each left 2. I'm going to start with my left endpoint here, so if I just scoot over and shift left 2, that would be at negative 5, 1. Then I have this maximum. If I move it left 2, then I have a new coordinate here of negative 3, 2. I'll do the minimum as well and move it left 2. And then the right-hand endpoint, I will move it right 2 as well. And basically connect the dots. And you'll notice that this shape is identical to the original graph's shape. It's just been moved to the left 2. And now I'll take these coordinates and move them all up 2. So I did it in two steps, but many times students that have just horizontal and vertical shifts can do both at the same time, and that would be completely fine. It's also important to label your final answer as h of x so that if you did do each individual step, your instructor knows which one is your final answer. So this would be my graph of, of h of x. Now, I'm technically done graphing this new function h of x, but I do want to pause here and dive a little deeper into why the shift is left 2 instead of right 2, because I know that can be a point of confusion. So, I don't want you to change anything on your paper, but I'm going to go ahead and erase, I'm erasing the shift up. I'm not going to consider that right now. I just want to consider the left 2 and take a look at why that's a shift to the left 2 instead of right 2. So humor me, let's dig into this a little further. I'm just going to look at h of x is equal to f of x plus 2. I just want to see how this x plus 2 is impacting my graph. And I'm going to look at a table and I'm just going to grab some of the original points on the curve f of x. So like the left-hand endpoint, that was negative 3, 1. And the original maximum there, that was negative 1, 2. I had a minimum down at 1, negative 4. And the right-hand endpoint here was originally at 3, 0. So these are just a couple of the original coordinates. And now I want to make a table, a new table, for h of x and see what happens when we follow this function rule. So let's begin with the first x value, which was negative 3. And according to the function rule, if we substitute a negative 3 into function h, that will be equal to f of negative 3 plus 2 which simplifies to f of negative 1. So this is essentially saying that when x is equal to negative 3 on this new function, so when x is equal to negative 3 on the new function h of x, my output here, the output, what I'm getting out, it's the same y value, the same y value as when we had x equals negative 1 on function f. So if I look at my table, when x was equal to negative 1 on function f, the y value was positive 2. 
So I was getting out positive 2. My y value here was positive 2. So look at what happened. When I had a y value of positive 2, that was the same y value here on function f, the same y value which was positive 2, and that came from when the x value was negative 1. That's two units larger, right, than when the x value was negative 3. That came from the x plus 2, the f of x plus 2 part. But when we actually go and graph that coordinate, negative 3, positive 2, so when we graph that, negative 3, positive 2, it was right here, we see, oh wait a minute, it was here at negative 1, positive 2, that's a shift to the left 2 when we had that same y value. Let me show it to you one more time. Let's look at the next x value. How about this next one here when x is equal to negative 1? So when x is negative 1, let's see what happens. h of negative 1, so that's going to be the same as f of negative 1 plus 2, which is f of 1. So we're saying that when x equals negative 1, my output, it's the same output as when I put in 1 on function f. So again, let's look at the table. When x was equal to positive 1 on function f, my output was negative 4. So therefore, this output here is going to be negative 4. So when x is equal to negative 1, the output is negative 4 here on function h. So if we plot that point, negative 1, negative 4, that was this coordinate here, we see it used to be 1, negative 4, and that ends up being a shift left to, once again, looking at our y values, Right? We had the same y value out here, which was negative 4. That y value was the same y value here, negative 4. But it, look at the x values. Right, That x value was when I had put in a value that was 2 units larger. So I hope that gives you a little bit more insight as to why this is a, a shift to the left 2. Let's go ahead and move on. And look at another example here. So we're going to graph another function, h of x, but this time it's a negative f of x minus 2. So the first part here, this negative f of x, this is really like a negative 1 times f of x. And remember, f of x is just a fancy way of writing y. So this is essentially like saying, hey, I'd like you to multiply your y values by a negative 1. So think about what happens if we multiply our y values by a negative 1. I'm going to show this in a table just to demonstrate it. You don't necessarily have to actually have the table written out. But if we take a look at the original points, the left end point, which is negative 3, 1, the maximum at negative 1, 2, the minimum at 1, negative 4, and the right end point at 3, 0. If the function rule is telling you to multiply, essentially multiply your y values by negative 1, Let's see what happens. So I'm going to show here that I'm multiplying all of these y values times a negative 1. And then I'm going to record my new values here in my table. So I'm actually going to just label this negative f of x. Since I haven't done the entire function rule, I haven't dealt with this negative 2 yet. So the x values didn't change. Those x values are all the same. But the y values all were multiplied by a negative 1. So if you plot these new points, so negative 3, now negative 1, negative 1, negative 2, 1, 4, and 3, 0, and connect those four points, you'll see that we have reflected the original graph, and we've reflected it over the x-axis. This point, left end point here, it jumped across the x-axis. That's the reflection that we're seeing. So when we change the y values, when we're multiplying those y values by a negative, it's actually reflecting the graph over the x-axis. So our first transformation here is a reflection, and we are going to reflect over the x-axis. Now our second transformation comes from this minus 2. And that minus 2 is outside of the parentheses. So again, I'm going to write it like this. 
I'm just going to write f of x minus 2. I'm not going to worry about that negative since we already took care of it because I want you to think about f of x as being y. So this is saying, hey, I'd like you to take your y values and subtract 2. So that's going to cause a shift down 2 if every y value becomes too smaller. So it's a vertical shift. We'll say it's a shift down 2. And if you wanted to, you could actually show that and demonstrate that in a table by taking my y values and subtracting 2 from all of these y values. So you could write minus 2 next to all of those y values and then have a final table here for h of x. And in this particular example, you'll notice that the x values didn't change at all. The y values now, so negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. Negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4, 4 minus 2 is 2, and 0 minus 2 is negative 2. And essentially, this would be your table of values for your final graph. But many times, people get more comfortable with transformations and don't actually have to write every single table to show all of your steps. I'm just showing it here since, for many of you, this is your first uh, introduction to, to transformations. So if we take all of those points on my red graph and move them all down to, you'll see that they will correspond with the points in the table. So taking the four key points, moving all of them down to, results in this graph here, the one I have graphed in blue. And then I would always recommend that you label your final graph so that your instructor knows which one to grade. So I'll label this final graph as the graph of h of x. All right, another example here. This one we're trying to graph a new function called function k. So this time we have a 2 in front of the f of x, so we're doing 2 times f of x. So again, remember f of x is a fancy way of writing y, so this function rule is telling me to multiply my y values by 2. Multiply my y values by 2. So that is going to cause a vertical stretch. So I am going to have a vertical stretch. You could even write times 2 if you wanted to, or a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. And I'll show it to you in a table, although I know some of you won't necessarily need a table, but it may help. If we take a look at the original four points on the graph, negative 3, 1, negative 1, 2, 1, negative 4, and 3, 0. But we are going to multiply all of the y values by 2. So very much like the last example where we multiplied the y values by a negative, but this time we're multiplying our y values by 2. So this will be 2 times f of x. Notice the x values don't change. So then my y values are all going to change. And look what happens when we plot those points. We have negative 3, 2. Again, the y value was multiplied by 2. Negative 1, 4. x value did not change. The y value was multiplied by 2. So if I plot those points, what has happened here, we've changed the shape of this graph. We have vertically stretched it away from the x-axis. Because we multiplied all the y values by 2, it's a vertical stretch. And finally, we have this plus 1 outside of the parentheses, so that's going to be a shift up 1. If you wanted to make a little table, you could basically add 1 to all of these y values, which is going to cause my red graph here to be shifted up 1. So I'm going to take those four key points and move them all up 1. A straight edge would be really good if you're at home. Use a straight edge and then label that final graph. I'll label it as k of x. All right, one more last example here. A new function we're going to try to graph, another function called k of x. This time we have f of negative x. So this is interesting because now it's telling us to multiply the x values by a negative. So once again, let me show you in a table form. By now you probably have these four points memorized on the original graph of f of x. So negative 3, 1, negative 1, 2, 1, negative 4, and 3, 0. 
but this time it's telling us to multiply the x values essentially by a negative. So if you can imagine, we're going to multiply these x values by a negative. And let's see what happens if we multiply the x values by a negative 1. And remember, in this, these examples in this video, these are very beginning examples. As you get better at this, you won't have to make tables um, as much, I promise. So the x values are getting multiplied by a negative, so that would give me a positive 3. Now my y values are not changing, so I'm multiplying the x values by a negative, but the y value is not changing. I have the same y values, and if you plot those values, or those points, excuse me, now we're having 3, 1, 1, 2, negative 1, negative 4, and negative 3, 0. Look at what happened on this graph. This has been a reflection, but this time it's a reflection over the y-axis. And hopefully that makes sense, because if the x values are the opposite, that meant that we were jumping across the y-axis. So this is a reflection over the y-axis, or you could say reflect over the y-axis. That's how I worded it in the previous example. Let me be consistent. Reflect over the y-axis. And then finally we have the minus 2, which is essentially like subtracting 2 from all of our y values. So the x values are changing, this, uh, staying the same, excuse me, and the y values are changing, which is going to be a shift down. So that's a shift down too. I'll take my red graph and just move those four key points down too. So there's nothing wrong with doing this in steps, one step at a time. Just label that final answer again, k of x, and that's going to be the new graph according to this function rule.